well, here we are again. If you're not caught up with the annual tradition on this channel, every 12 months or so I like to take a step back, stop being a cynical Sonic fan on the internet, and really spotlight some of the things that really keep this franchise alive, the true games that are worth caring about that keep this hedgehog running. For better or for worse, the fan community. Whether they be mods for PC games like Generations, a bunch of original fan games like personal fan favorite Sonic Robo Blast 2, that one's really good, or even some, uh, some more stuff on the cursed side, like Sonic Suggests. I have been saying forever now that you are way better spending your energy being mad or happy or something good or bad that Sega is doing with Sonic on an official capacity. It is not worth it. Take a step back and look at some of the really awesome or, quite frankly, batshit insane creations the fans have been coming up with all this time because some of this stuff will surprise you. Over the years, we have certainly taken a look at a ton of different fan creations. However, it's actually been over five years since the last episode that was strictly dedicated to the ROM hack side of the community. Once Sonic Mania dropped, it was nothing but PC mods and fan games for miles. Now, since that time, I have been fortunate enough to take a small part in the annual Sonic Hacking Contest. Of course, we've also checked out some hacks for other franchises like Kirby and Banjo-Kazooie, but man, Looking solely at Sonic ROM hacks, that was partially responsible for allowing me to continue delivering content to you all to this very day. So I had a massive urge to, uh, yeah, go, go back to my roots, I guess you could say. Listen, alright, I apologize if the fat Sonic thumbnail showed up in your recommended feed far too many times. Uh, that's, uh, that, that was the algorithm's fault. <laughs> and, uh, you're not, you're not gonna hear me complaining. So, a grand return to Sonic ROM hacks, huh? Okay, I can, I can work with that, but if you've been paying attention to this community, you would know that the classic Sonic space has changed dramatically, especially in the last year or so. There's a, there's a lot to go over. Not a whole lot of yeth, though. I'm, su I'm, I'm, more, I'm surprised about that one. I kind of thought that would take off a little bit more. The limits on what the Genesis can do are regularly being broken. The once exclusive to mobile versions of these games that were considered the definitive ones, not really by choice, are now on PC in a bit of an unconventional way. And alongside that, Sega entered the fray as well in an official capacity with Sonic Origins. All right, let's, let's talk about this big blue elephant in the room real quick, please. Yeah, so like, I mean, clearly the entire origin situation can't go unaddressed, right? Especially with all of its ties to the fan game community. You're not gonna hear me echo all of the negative talking points with the latest Sonic collection like everyone else has done in an extended rant. I agree with all of it. But honestly, I do hold the opinion that on a casual level, this gets the job done just fine. When you look at someone like me, who is an absolute maniac, as someone who has actively inserted himself into a community where people get mad when Sonic is the wrong shade of blue, then yeah, I guess I'm expected to be a little bit more critical, but that's not me today. At its core, we finally have competent ports of the mobile versions of Sonic 1 and 2, a modern port of the CD remaster from 2011, and an official re-release of Sonic 3. Regardless of the issues, like how they took the prototype music from 3 and actively made it worse for no real reason since the prototype Type stuff sounded totally fine, I still can't believe that. And also, this interesting hidden palace skip where you can click restart upon entering the area in Mushroom Hill Zone and essentially skip the entirety of Sonic and Knuckles. I genuinely love that. It's still, at the very least, a very fascinating release. Because not long before Origins, a major development in the online community was made. The mobile Sonic 1, 2, and CD were not only fully decompiled, allowing anybody to look at every iota of the game's files and port it to whatever device they wanted, but also recompiled them in glorious ways for everybody to get their hands on. Provided, of course, that you have purchased a legal copy of the game from, say, Steam. Oops! So now, let me introduce you all to not only a superior version of CD with more options than the official release, more importantly, Sonic 1 Forever and Sonic 2 Absolute, completing the set with the already widely popular Sonic 3 Angel Island Revisited to give the fans what is truly the definitive way to play these games. Uh, so sorry about that, Sega. You, you really should have seen this coming from miles away. Oh, uh, my bad. Tails away. 
And yes, as many of you can see coming with the availability of open access classic Sonic games on PC, this also opens the door for mods to enter the scene too, which do perform differently than these standard ROM hacks, so all of this development basically gives fans many more platforms for unique Sonic experiences. Whether we're looking at the native PC ports or something that's built off of the older Genesis ROM files, the lines between hack and proper mod are blurring more and more by the day, and it is so exciting to see. So, like clockwork, I have played far too many Sonic the Hedgehog games once again. The things I do for you people. We're gonna start with the PC mods first. It is a much more subtle landscape than what we have with the ROM hack side of things, where it's just a whole lot crazier and a whole lot more unexpected, so sit tight. I know many of you are gonna be asking for my opinion on I made you a salad with extra tomatoes, but, but hang tight. We'll get there, I promise. Wait. Salad. That reminds me, today's sponsor is HelloFresh. Are you looking to save time, money, and stress when it comes to meal planning and preparation with the delicious recipes sent right to your front door? What, do you hate happiness? You're watching video game content on the internet, I know this speaks directly to you. I have been using HelloFresh for years. Being able to use fresh ingredients alongside the included foolproof step-by-step -step recipe cards, not only do you get great food at the end of your journey, but also a learning experience. You get to learn and hone a new skill. According to a Zagat dining survey, HelloFresh is up to 72% cheaper than dining at a restaurant or going grocery shopping. Wow, savings. Once you've learned that, you can't unlearn it, you know? Just mosey on over to their website, pick your meals of choice from the very large weekly menu, and then sit back and wait for your personalized box to come right to your door. Perhaps you have some food goals that you would like to hit too. Well, HelloFresh offers veggie, pescatarian, and fit and wholesome meals to make it easy to stick to set goals without sacrificing good flavor. We all know that a lot of low-cal food options out there can be pretty boring, but with HelloFresh's calorie smart offerings, I can confirm you get really tasty food while staying within in your desired calorie count. There are really just too many upsides to HelloFresh, and hey, at the end of the day, good food is good food. And if you want good food, use my link or go to HelloFresh.com and use the code POGANTSEPT16 for 16 free meals across 7 boxes and 3 surprise gifts. It's about time you learned how to cook instead of just getting a bunch of fast food because you're too busy gaming. I get it. I get it, believe me, but trust me, you'll thank me later. Thank you so much to HelloFresh for sponsoring this episode, always happy to have you guys along. And now, Blue Guy. There is just so much to be impressed with when it comes to Sonic 1 Forever and Sonic 2 Absolute. For one, both games include these sleek new UIs now. Fancy new menus, a bunch of achievements to work towards, a ton of options to fine tune the games to your liking. Some extra game modes too, like the time trial in Sonic 2, inspired by that one time Melissa Joan Hart played the game on Nick Arcade back in the 90s, where she was told to get 25 rings and actively skipped a bunch of rings. Yeah, I like to see Clarissa explain that one. These versions have it all. At their core, they already have the technical advancements the mobile games provided, so we have smoother animations during normal gameplay, and more impressively, the special stages, because dear god, it is a nightmare going back to the Genesis half-pipes after this. And thanks to the options, we can throw in, say, the drop dash into our moveset, add in the elemental shields for a new way to play these classics, and yes of course, very easily add mods too. If you're interested, it does take a bit more finesse to figure out, it's not as seamless as modding the 3D games on Steam, but once you figure it out, you are golden. Since these ports are relatively new, there aren't too many mods to choose from as it currently stands, but I would still highly recommend going for the Expansion Pack mod for Sonic 1, which adds extra music options, a new Knuckles sprite that tries to mimic the Sonic 1 style instead of just plopping in the Sonic 3 sprites, really like that, new victory animations, that's just plain old cute, and Metal Sonic as a playable character. Sure, he didn't exist in the times of Sonic 1, if you care about the timeline, whatever, this is fun, enjoy fun things. There's just a lot of little things here that really help round out the overall overall package. Throw in the unique act palette and music mods too for some extra flavor. Let's be honest with ourselves, uh, Sonic 1 is not the most exciting game in the world, but all of these extra things with the expansion pack really make this a better overall package. And similarly, Sonic 2 Absolute has the community pack. Music options, new animation options, victory animations are here. Once again, very cute. This time he holds up two fingers instead of one. That's adorable. The classic Knuckles sprite shows up once again, Metal Sonic is here too, just an overall great way to experience this timeless classic. Most of Sonic 1 Forever's mods are, again, minimalistic, but absolute? 
has some great ones to choose from. We got the inclusion of the prototype Hidden Palace Zone from Sonic 2's beta, that's really cool, since the official take on that zone that was added in the mobile port is pretty different. There's an extended Death Egg Zone that adds some actual level design and rings to the area, a massive improvement from going against the Death Egg robot with a one-hit kill, didn't like that part from the original. And there's a pretty interesting boss rush stage in the form of the Egg Gauntlet. This zone's existence is pretty fascinating actually. Egg Gauntlet was initially developed for the 2013 mobile port, but was inevitably scrapped for the much less interesting boss attack zone, uh, presumably because Egg Gauntlet was far too creative and original of a name to go with. But I mean, come on, look at this. This pseudo vaporwave aesthetic with these level designs and gimmicks that transition from where the bosses came from, it's really cool. Doing it all in one go is a pain in the butt, but damn is it cool to see it preserved here. Or you could simply have a better Sonic sprite for these special stages. His quills were kinda weird in the original release here, let's be real, now that you've seen it, you can't unsee it. This is kinda better, I'm not gonna lie. Or you know, you, you could also play as, as fin fin Phineas and Ferb. Well, it's no Sonic 3 air breaking bad menu theme, but I guess it's fine. Now Sonic CD doesn't have as many options to work with with this decompilation, but by simply installing the CD Restored mod, we get a ton of smaller changes implemented like higher quality FMV. Gotta love that. In general though, since we already had a great version of CD available on console, this isn't really as impressive. Which is what I would say if I was a fool. Oh hey, look at the red guy. Is that... Is, is that Knuckles? A fully playable Knuckles that Sega couldn't figure out how to add to Origins? Wow, that's crazy. Oh, hey, is that Amy too? Oh, oh wow. Oh, man, that reminds me. You remember when the initial Origins trailer advertised new characters and then removed that nugget from later trailers when people called them out for not being accurate? Uh, good times. Fully playable Amy Rosie the Rascal, everyone. Don't let your memes be dreams. This mod actually introduces a ton, like... Oh, oh my god, so many minor changes that I cannot even begin to notice as a casual player, but assuming this is all coming from someone who actually knows what they're talking about, this is, this is very impressive. And while not included in the restored mod, there is another mod that gives us Super Sonic. Get 50 rings and you turn yellow, there you go, it, it works as it should. Listen, alright, I am far from a big fan of Sonic CD, just to be totally honest with you, but this is awesome. This is awesome? Yeah, this is, this is very awesome. Knuckles absolutely fits the more complicated level design of this game perfectly. Big fan of what this version of CD has to offer. But then, yes, there is Angel Island Revisited, the true MVP, let's be honest here. A fan-made recreation of Sonic 3 and Knuckles that made this the definitive experience immediately. That title, for a little while, did used to go to Sonic 3 Complete, still a fantastic ROM hack that provides a bunch of options while still being confined to a Genesis ROM, but man, 3 Air is perfect. Widescreen, smooth animations, music options with the Michael Jackson tracks still available, appreciate that a whole lot. Achievements and unlockables, you can randomize the layouts of the Blue Sphere stages if you're looking for a little bit of insanity in your runs. All while there was no mobile version to work with. And it was released years ago in 2019, that is so so cool. Now, yes, the Origins adaptation existing does take a little bit of the wind out of this version's sails, because that version is kinda good too, but outside of the music, which I know is a minefield that I am sure Sega simply didn't want to deal with, on release, Origins was filled with a bunch of bugs, so it ends up looking infinitely more embarrassing with air existing, similar to how Nintendo just couldn't put Super Mario 64 in widescreen for the 3D All-Stars release shortly after that decompilation showed it was totally possible. Okay, wait, sorry, sorry, that was a bit of a side tangent. I don't want to revert back to being a Sonic complainer on the internet. Today. At its core, the Sonic 3 Air experience is pretty much flawless, but if you wanted to mod the game to, say, I don't know, make the level card say Hydrocity instead of Hydro City, you can do that and piss off everybody who disagrees with you. That'll, that'll be fun. Gotta say, I am a big uh, interior of the blimp zone man myself. Rolls right off the tongue. Maybe you prefer the Origins music of the prototype music because you have weird musical taste. Well, thankfully, we have a mod that has you covered. You, you weirdo. Since this version of the game has been available for much longer, the custom characters are not hard to find. Amy with the workable hammer, check. Mighty with the ground pound, check. Ray with the swooping glides, check. Shadow with the boost, Sonic with the boost, Metal Sonic with his Metal Sonic ways. All fantastic ways to give this game a second, third, or in my case, like 200th playthrough. 
It's all of the little things that add to the overall experience, like these characters all having unique special stage sprites. That really sells things a whole lot. I don't know why I would expect to go into a big ring and then it would just be Sonic there because the developer forgot to make a sprite, but no, there they are, and they look great. I found these mods that give you Sonic 1 styled and Sonic 2 styled sprites. It's purely cosmetic, but it's just kind of surreal seeing Sonic still the same in the more detailed world. Just kind of neat. But I can read the audience, you're definitely like me and thought that while Sonic 3 is a fine enough game, it didn't have enough shotgun. Oh thank god. But it's fine, okay, it's not overly violent, it's the shotgun from Doom, so it's a video game prop. Sonic is fighting for the greater good, we're okay. Let's just go down the list of some of the cool things you can do with Sonic 3 Air. Uh, so there's Mephilus Hunt, this one was pretty cool. Basically you play Sonic 3 as normal, but that dastardly Mephilus, he's on your tail the whole time. You stand still, you watch him pop up from the ground, ew, that's gross! And then he'll kill you! Well, except for boss fights. He just sort of flies there, motionless. I mean, he doesn't want to be rude. There's a Colors moveset mod that not only gives you a boost, but you have some Wisp abilities too. It's pretty jank, considering that obviously this game wasn't built around these aliens, but it's still pretty cool. DA Garden is a really popular ROM hack that altered level designs and color palettes. It's been ported over to the PC version. Pretty fun way to go through this adventure in a different way, sort of like the Sonic Mania Encore mode. Chaos the Imposter. This one deserves a special mention. This isn't like your typical character swap hack that you would expect. Chaos has the ability to transform into Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles all at the push of a different button. You don't realize the absolute power of having the drop dash, flight, glide, and block breaking abilities all in one character. Oh man, this is so much fun. This boy became a final boss for a reason. You can make the special stage rings 3D here, so that's that's kind of cool. Uh, you can give Sonic his Gamecom sprite. Uh, why, why, why wouldn't you? There's this one graphical mod that's kind of cool that styles the characters more like their cartoon counterparts. That's just kind of neat looking. Look, Tails does the cough thing from Mania Adventures. That was a that was a reference. Or 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 there's Sonic feats. Finally, Sonic with no torso. That was my least favorite part. All right, let me just uh, real quick. Believe it or not, this is what the ideal male body looks like. I am all on board for Sonic taking on this brand new Goomba form. It's good to see that Tails is such a loyal friend too. He also cut off his own torso. Ah, best best friends for life. Okay, but surely, with how meme this mod is, there's no way that they also altered the special state sprites. Nope, nope, they're altered too! Amazing. All in all, Sonic the Feet saving the day. I'm all in. 10 out of 10. <laughs> oh my god, the signpost is short Sonic 2! Oh god, I love this. So, ultimately, when it comes to these PC versions, I mean, yes, Origins does have its fair share of issues, and I do commend a lot of the work that went into that package, like the brand new cutscenes, but if you're really looking for the ideal experiences with these classic games, then look no further, your best option is Sonic 1 Forever, Sonic CD Restored, Sonic 2 Absolute, and Sonic 3 Air. Fantastic from top to bottom. Kudos to everybody that was involved with these projects, proving true the tried and true saying, fans do what Sega don't. Okay, you all want to see the wackier ROM hacks, I get it. Will the PC versions of these games ever get to the level of absurdity that the Genesis ROM hacks are at? I mean, probably not, but even still, they're all just different pillars in this same little subset of the community, and they're just as interesting to put under the same microscope. I mean, come on now, I've been meaning to spice up my 500th playthrough of Sonic 2 already, this was the best place to go. Now, if you remember, Sonic 3 on the Genesis never really got the hacking love that 1 and 2 got. I'm assuming that's due to 3's relative complexity, since the accessibility of the PC version shows some of the endless possibilities that are there. But back on the Genesis, I, I mean, hell, why would you even bother attempting with that game when you can already do damn near anything with the other two? Dude, like, some someone is out there implementing swimming into Sonic 1, okay? Like... Why? Who cares about Sonic 3, right? Well, thankfully, in more recent times, we got stuff like... Oh, Jesus. I can't help but be attracted to the insanity, man. This is one of my favorite art pieces for Sonic yet.
It's interesting though, this is absolutely a meme hack, I mean that's, I think that's obvious. Nonsensical level design, just pure frustration all around. But it's this interesting amalgamation of mechanics from all of the classics in one level. The wacky workbench bounce pads, Metropolis enemies, Carnival Knight's spinning barrel of doom, Sonic 1's special stage gems? Hey Mega G Wolf, what's up, how you doing? And then you get to the end and you defeat the boss, oh man, it's crazy, I feel wrong even spoiling this. And then Sonic died, f*** you. First off, Rude. Over the years, we get to slowly see some of the advancements with the Sonic 3 engine with the few hacks that are available. Like I found this one level called Water Chase, which you get chased by rising water. Kinda challenging, kinda cool. And then there's Chaos Adventure, which brings in abilities from Sonic Chaos on the Game Gear, and hey, that's cool too. Even with modified level designs though, I don't really think these work very well, but quite frankly, I don't think they worked out well in the original in the first place. Uh, Sonic Chaos, not that great. Is that a hot take? I don't know. Battle Race. Now this one is particularly interesting because this is a complete reworking of Sonic 3 to be a competitive race, where you gain points for nailing things before your opponent does, you got this fancy new UI to tie things together. This is very impressive. And right on the offset, as soon as you turn on the ROM, it says right there, if you use this with a Genesis emulator, you can play online. Great times to be had there, guaranteed. But then, who? Sonic Epilogue. We got a little more fanciness here. Sparkly new title screen, there's an opening cinematic. Oh, we got some crazy stuff now. And then you like, basically like, turn into Rocket Knight? Oh, oh hell yeah, dude, that is sick. You do this segment in space and then it leads to a series of brand new and insane boss fights. Explosions all over the place, intense music, some secret bosses too if you're feeling really spicy. This engine is starting to really show some chops. Just take a look at Sonic Delta 40 MB to see more of what's possible with this engine. All of the stages from the Genesis games, including a couple extras, crammed into a single ROM file built off of the Sonic 3 engine. Like, all of them. This is Sonic Origin Story Mode with no cutscenes and a couple of extra levels in one Genesis ROM. That is, that is insane. But then... Yo. Dude, like... What? This is incredible. Hellfire Saga. What if Sonic was in hell, like where I've been for the past 10 years making all this content? Uh, I mean, yeah, to put it simply, it is basically Sonic running through all these classic spooky 16-bit games all at once. We have references from a bunch of them. You got some Ghost and Goblins in here, some Castlevania, Mickey Mouse. That's a big Garsh moment right there. This is a full-fledged adventure with these large, elaborate level designs. The soundtrack is fantastic. You got a ton of songs ported from the same games. Great new sprites and animations for Sonic. Pentagrams all over the place, so don't show this to your family over Thanksgiving dinner. That will not go over very well. A lot of well-done gimmicks like these switches that reverse gravity. All of the bosses, like every single one of them is an insane technical marvel. But hey, we're sticking truthful here. This is still Sonic 3. You got the Insta Shield, Elemental Shields. Somehow, I have no idea how, but we took Sonic 3 and turned it into this. Amazing. And the crazy part, it's actually really fun. Like, it's far too common to have hacks that offer up a bunch of cool ideas and not look impressive, but don't really offer a super fulfilling experience with said ideas. That is not the case here at all. And this is a demo? Dude, like, aside from this annoying soft lock, I got very near the end of the game, which was like, I don't know, 40, 45 minutes in. The thought that there's going to be more of this game is very exciting. We need more, uh, we need more takes of Sonic uh, running through hell and going up against Satan. Uh, we, we need to spice up the franchise. This is the way to do it. Sonic 3 completely bypassed the weird era of hacks that 1 and 2 got, and we quickly got an absolute banger, and we got a whole lot of bangers to come. I cannot wait to see what's in store next. Oh, God. Okay. Dr. Yundong? Uh, is, that, is that how you say it? Uh, I, don't, I don't even know if I care. Uh, okay, sure. Let, let's see what we got here. It's the maniac! Okay, so on one hand, I gotta say, injecting a little bit of top-down exploration into my Sonic 3, cool stuff. Uh, you don't really see that all too often, so that's, that's kind of admirable. I like that. But on the other hand, what in the name of all that is holy and unholy in this world is this, and who gave him a PhD to become a doctor? He shouldn't be licensed. Oh, okay, there we go. I found it. I found the side-scrolling stuff. He's even more disgusting in this form. And this jump cycle is gonna give me nightmares. He's too noodly. And he has a... a chomp? Move? I mean, I guess with a mouth like that, may as well. And he can... crawl... Why does the bottom of the screen say lover? Oh no, it's... it's the egg guy. Boom, just like that. 
We are the win. Lover went right. Now, unfortunately, the rest of the hack is currently unfinished. Or fortunately, I guess. I really don't know anymore. Look, fish in the snow. Listen, I went through years of thinking that Yeth was the thing, you know? Everybody watch out! White streak speeds by, it's Yeth! But no, you tag team him up with Yundong now, and you will never see your family again. And with that, that about covers it for Sonic 3 as it currently stands. I'm sure this will be an ever-growing list of just the most impressive and demented sh** you've ever seen in your entire life, but I still think that Angel Island Revisited will take the cake in terms of what the fans are truly capable of with the adventure that we all know and love. Sonic 2 and 1, on the other hand? Oh, you already know this is where the craziest stuff is. A few years ago, I talked about Yoshi and Sonic 2, and quite frankly, I don't care if this is a repeat that I've already talked about before. This is one of the most insane ROM hacks I've ever played. It just works. This is Yoshi exactly as he played in Yoshi's Island, obnoxious baby crying mechanics and all, on the Genesis in Sonic 2. Oh, oh, you, you get to shoot eggs at Eggman. All these years later, things make a whole lot more sense. Oh no, guys, watch out. Yoshi got all the, all the Chaos Emeralds. And I bring this hack up again because if you thought that this level of crossbreeding wasn't enough for you, well, how about Mega Man X? You start the game, it's got the level select screen and everything, like you would expect, and once again, it, it just works. It's not as meme -y or ridiculous as some of the other ROM hacks we've talked about today, but just the fact that this works exactly as you would expect it to, I feel like we're living in a simulation. None of this should be real. To be honest, once the novelty wears off, I don't really think that X works as well in this game as Yoshi does, which is an insane sentence regarding Sonic 2, by the way. He's slower, using the buster makes encounters with the most basic enemies take longer than they should, but damn it, there's something about seeing X gamble his life away in Casino Night Zone that I just love, and it's still better than Mega Man X7. And granted, a lot of my enjoyment comes from the fact that I have literally played Sonic 2 at least a hundred times over my life, on just a casual level, so being able to spice up one of my favorite classic games in brand new ways like this is just so cool. Like, I can't believe I haven't talked about this before, but Pink Edition, just a fantastic implementation of Amy with her hammer and Cream with her chow cheese, replacing Sonic and Tails, as you would expect. Fan service aside, there is a lot of extra movement options afforded to you with this moveset that really lets you rethink these stages in brand new ways. And this can be applied to Mighty and Ray as well, playing just like they did in Mania Plus. Mighty has his ground pound and he can take hits from spikes. Ray can fly around Super Mario World cape style. By this point, you have dozens of different characters to play through this game with, and quite frankly, this is what Eggman deserves for making so many enemies. How bad of a person do you have to be to pull Bunny Rabot in from another dimension who wants to kick your ass? You know? You, got, you gotta be pretty bad. Oh, okay. Alright, we got Sonic 2 with Mario Odyssey's Cappy mechanic. Alright. Sometimes you have a wild idea and nothing comes from it, but damn it, I'm able to blaze through Emerald Hill Zone as a buzz bomber, and that's kind of sick. Only a few levels work so far, you, you know, I, I, at least I assume this part isn't intentional, but I very much look forward to the day where Sonic can capture Eggman, a truly terrifying image is sure to follow, I am very excited. And then the next one I found was simply called Funky Boss. Oh! Funky? More like ballsy. Kaizo Sonic 2, oh, Jesus Christ. No! Man, we, uh, we're really still doing this whole Kaizo thing in the year of our hedgehog 2022, aren't we? Finally, level design where this zone name makes sense. My thing when it comes to hacks like this is not so much that I have very little patience, it's that, you know, my favorite thing is when you nail one of the really difficult challenges perfectly your first time, only to fail the next one, and then you continue to fail on the thing that you nailed perfectly before, and you keep screwing up when you did fine the first time! My blood pressure's doing fine, why do you ask? Now this next one is called Sonic 2 QP, and QP could mean many things. Quantum physics, quality policy, quarter pounder, maybe a throwback to 2XL with that one? But no, even better. I did it. I, I beat I beat the level with skill. I couldn't figure out if the QP thing has an official name behind it yet, but I'm gonna go ahead and opt for it to be called Sonic 2, uh, quickly. P please Sonic 2 CD Remix. Now this one's pretty cool. Essentially, you take Sonic 2, 
but give it the CD time travel mechanic. There are some extra changes on top of that, like there's a couple of additional playable characters, some music customization options as well, but yeah, you can now run through Emerald Hill and travel to the past or future. There's not really much incentive to do so aside from just saying that you can, but considering this is done on the Genesis and not the Sega CD, that's pretty impressive technologically speaking. The classic Metal Sonic race was also ported into Death Egg Zone, how cool is that? Like it just feels better, cause I, I, I don't know, the Spin Dash and CD sucked, so this is, this is nice, I like this. It's still in its demo state, but hey, that's why you gotta check into the Sonic Hacking Contest. There's the, uh, there, there's the shameless plug. Hope that works. Sonic 2 Tail, uh, Tail Splosion. A hack where if Tails touches the floor, he explodes into an endless ember. Finally. Honestly, you should probably get that checked out. Uh, it's just, it's just a shame the one doctor in this world is evil. Really SOL on that one, sorry, you gotta update your health insurance. All jokes aside, this is a pretty cool take on the whole Outrun Tails idea. Really adds a lot of tension to the water sections and chemical plant. I like it, I, I hate it. Can't even enjoy a peaceful game of pinball without a fear of a two-tailed fox exploding and losing all of your winnings. But thankfully, since I've played this game so many times over the years, it's still easy to get to the end, take down Robotnik, and free all the little baby explosions from their capsule and save the day. Hope this exploding tails idea makes it into Sonic Frontier somehow. You better do it, otherwise the game's gonna fail. But for my money, there is no experience quite like... Snarlf. Oh, sorry boss. Yeah, I can't, I can't come in today. I got the Snarlf. In a move that's too psychotic to fathom until actually playing, what what if Sonic was golf ball? Go for power, go for height, pick a god, and pray. You have no direct control over anything here. I mean, okay, sometimes after coming off of a ramp you have a little bit of influence, but for the most part, embrace pain. There is something truly sadistic about taking away all this control in a Sonic game. Honestly, some of these moving blocks and chemical plant are torture, but damn it if I didn't have the curiosity to see it through. If I had any recommendation though, if this hack were to continue development, I would say to actually remove the bosses altogether and just have the levels end instead. It's not like the bosses are impossible to get through, but these are way too frustrating compared to simply getting through the obstacle course stages. But hey, say you're still a big fan and you want more Snulf in your life, well don't worry, we got Snulf 3 and Knulf 2, the hot sequel. All right, he's queuing up for the shot, good power, good height. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. You love to see such a performance on a nice hot day in the burning forest like today. Magnificent all around. Let's just hope this headshot doesn't get into any controversy like a certain tiger did. And then we have Sonic 1, and what's interesting about Sonic 1, just as it was back in the day, this is the most boring game in the series, and yet somehow it's provided the most interesting ROM hacks of the bunch. Listen, okay, you throw a hack in my face that's titled I made you a salad with extra tomatoes and I say, okay sir, thank you so much, this will be delicious. We got two variations of this hack, one where you play as Sonic and one where you play as this weird cat thing. That's the extra tomatoes one. I made you a salad is just with Sonic, extra tomatoes is that thing. It's important to keep that in mind. It's interesting, this is just a big ol' well done level hack with a big ol' food theme. Quite an untapped market for zone theming, I think. Look, the onions cry at you. Sometimes it do feel that way, I get it. Yundong is no more. Oh, thank God. Eggman has also taken the next logical step with his brand new vehicle at the end of the stage. Knife. This is a pretty fun level, but looking back at Extra Tomatoes, it's even more interesting. This cat, in all of his cursed variations, is making me kind of nostalgic. I, I feel like I've... I feel like I've seen this one before. Oh, oh, oh my God, it's Pantufa the cat? That's right! Man, I talked, I talked about Pantu for years ago. I feel so bad for not giving this hack more attention back then. Quite frankly, the cat gave me a bit of a seductive look in its earliest version on the title screen, and I just couldn't look past it. I apologize. Back in the day, Pantufa was just a relatively typical hack. It played exactly like Sonic with an array of new assets. It was fine. Lacked all cohesion, but it was fine. But you look at the latest version of Pantufa the cat, it, uh, uh, ex excuse me? This has evolved so much. Pantufa has his own moveset. You got some Mario elements thrown in there with these blocks, all the while still kind of feeling like the Sonic game he was initially based on. There's this one part where you go inside a cave and something about seeing the background go from the grassy fields to the rocky wall interior is just really cool. This is looking great. Then you got these dogs barking at you and they have the word bark coming out when they do so. 
that's uh, that's that's a chubby cherub reference, I think. If it wasn't before, uh, well, it is now. Sorry about that. That's uh, that's totally chubby cherub. I have no idea how much longer this hack will be in development for, but man, seeing how far this hack has come, I'm very excited for the future. Being able to track the progress of this game over the years, you get to really see where the time and effort goes to. That's awesome. We have certainly come a long way from S Sonic and Tails in paint. Oh god, more like Ant Dude in pain. But if you wanted to keep things simple, well don't worry, you still got plenty of those tried and true character hacks coming through to fulfill your every desire. Cream with a working cheese, Shadow with a light speed dash, sadly no gun, not yet, one day it has to happen, I'm telling you. Rouge with her downward spike, Charmy if you feel like just flying through the stage with reckless abandon, sure to appease the two Charmy fans out there. Big with his fishing rod, of course. Mick, Mick, Mickey, Mickey Mouse? That's two Mickey Mouse mentions in one Sonic ROM hack episode, that's... Never say anything's impossible. Oh. Oh no, P Pikachu the mouse. <laughs> oh man, okay. You know what, I was ready to meme on this one because look at this. Getting big uh, Captain Falcon Pikachu vibes out of this one, and I don't like it. But then I saw some of the enemy badniks, but they have Pokemon redesigns, and then I was like, okay, yeah, this makes it totally worth it, that is really clever. Some of you old school fans may even remember Pepsi in Sonic 1 with the, uh, the Jimmy Neutron references. How could we forget? Would you be happy to know I also found a Pepsi Remastered? No? Too bad. This part is not sponsored, I promise you. This part, this part's not sponsored, I would not lie to you. Uh, but I, but I wouldn't say no if the offer would have come into my email box. I'm just saying, uh, until then, I'm, I'm a Coke Zero guy. Over time, hacks for Sonic 1 are simply getting more interesting mechanically and especially conceptually. Black and White was a very interesting take where levels have been stripped of their color and most of the music on top of that, with only collecting rings being the thing that slowly brings life back to the land. It's like that one episode from Powerpuff Girls, <laughs> that was the first thing that came to mind with the evil clown. Reverse Curse is another simple idea. Collecting rings is actually bad now. Everything I know is a lie. But it's not just some mindless avoid ring scenario. Maintaining a shield, rings do no damage. You got invincibility? Well, rings actually add it to your counter. That attention to detail really made this an interesting run of the game because it's not just avoid the rings. You can get rings if you're smart about it. Really cool. Hell, there's this one hack where you simply die if you ever press the left button. You really miss the small things when they're taken away from you. This is, oh God, I just want to progress, but I, oh God, but I can't. You can even, you can even die in the special stages if you press left. That's amazing. As far as what the potential of the future has in store for us, well, I think Definitive has a lot of potential. A fairly standard reimagining of Sonic 1 at this point, you know, kind of different level design, kind of different sprites, you know what to expect here. But I love the sprite work, the music has been tweaked as well, and Bridge Zone even makes an appearance, that's so cool. I just want a nice, solid experience, and this game does that. Listen, Sonic 1 Master System was far from a great game, but I really enjoy seeing some elements from that game get some love. The Bridge Zone theme is so, so good, and it is a shame that it is restricted to the 8-bit game. And actually, on that topic, conversely, there's even a hack out there that's attempting to port the Genesis game over to the Master System, instead of the other way around. This is so... weird. I'm just, I'm not really much of a fan of the 8-bit Sonic games, so seeing this, it's kind of making me feel strange. Both of these adventures shared totally different zones, so to see all of the Genesis stuff downscaled to older hardware is just really neat. But I think the hack that caught my eye and my imagination for the future the most is Sonic Debut. I am such a sucker for a video game's beta elements that are simply lost to time and the cuttingroomfloor.net. Debut isn't necessarily a sort of beta recreation, but it is a new set of levels based on a bunch of beta elements. Like Sonic doesn't spin jump, he collects coins instead of rings, that's cursed, but he does it here. Your health is attached to hearts instead of your ring, uh, sorry, your coin count. There's something just so alluring about the mysterious old prototype stuff that we found in Sonic 1 so far, so having anybody out there try to take what we do know and make something new out of it? Nothing but respect. There are so many beta or prototype recreation attempts for these games out there, but this is the one I wanted to talk about the most, because I was inevitably not going to be able to talk about every single hack. Do some research, you'll have a great time. There's a lot to play through. Or you can choose the side of chaos and just throttle the Genesis power to its limits with Tag Team Adventure. This is a hack where you control four characters at once and play through the game as a damn slideshow because the emulator can't handle it. 
Oh dear god, why? I love the ambition of seeing Sonic Classic Heroes where you had three Sonic characters in one stage. Oh, that was super cool. What if we added a fourth? God, I can't wait for the fifth character to show up. That's gonna be so exciting. Hey man, credit to the developer here. I get it. You found out you can do it, and by the grace of all that is holy, you pulled it off. But oh man, at what cost? If it wasn't obvious, I find there to be a lot of merit in seeing just how much you can squeeze out of the Genesis hardware while giving us something completely new and original. It is super, super cool that you can do that without resorting to the endless possibilities of the PC versions. I like that a whole lot, and that is no further exemplified than with these next few. <laughs> oh, oh man, this is my new favorite. Sonic 1 Blastless Edition. That dastardly Robotnik has stolen all of the blast processing, and it's up to you to keep your rings in check to make it so you could... <laughs> actually see what you're doing, I guess. If you keep losing all of your rings and you keep taking damage... Literally 1984. Yep, that's him. That's... that's Sonic. Playing through the game this way, with the whole rings recovering blast mechanic, is fine and dandy, I, I enjoy that, but... The real joy is diving into the in-game menu and tinkering around with all of the different options on the fly. Yes, for one, it is very impressive that these things can just be flicked on in no time, but also, you know that this means I was gonna go ahead and make the crustiest Sonic 1 you ever did see in your life. Massive pixels, ridiculously slow screen scrolling, give me only five colors, that's more than enough. Remove some of the sound channels too, we had too much of those in the original. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep, man. This is, uh, Sonic 1 as you remembered it. I really love when you play Starlight Zone this way and the theme song just holds one note for far too long now. Beautiful. Harmonic, even. I don't know what's more cursed, honestly. How this looks and sounds, or the fact that I've played so much Sonic 1 in my life, I can still beat the game just fine. I, I don't know what's worse. I could play through Sonic 1 like this, that's a problem. I can now see why Sega touted blast processing so much back in the day. Clearly it was needed. No way this would have ever competed against Mario otherwise. Hell, Sonic wouldn't even be able to take out Pitfall Harry at this rate. But you know what, man? There's... There's something missing. There's something additional that we need to take away from Sonic to really achieve true greatness. Hmm... This entire time we've been playing these games with controllers. There just has to be a better way. Oh my god. Sonic 1, point and click. Finally, the joy of playing a Sonic the Hedgehog game with the mouse rather than a D-pad. It's like... Kirby Canvas Curse, I, I guess? You still use the Wasada keys to actually move, but everything else controlled with a mouse. Mess with the enemies, carry item boxes, if you click a spring, the cursor flies away. That's hilarious. It's a really unique way to go through this adventure, but you know what? I, I say we still have to find a way to get the light gun to work next. That, that would really be something. Until then, though, the MVP award goes to Sonic 2 Mouse Edition instead. This gets the stupid keyboard out of the way, too. Now you also have to scroll the mouse to move Sonic. The way God intended. Thanks to the magical technology we have been afforded, we can use a mouse to control a hedgehog who was initially conceptualized to be a rabbit, and the main villain is an egg. I love video games. So, in conclusion, Sonic the Hedgehog 